of Cornell West, of President Obama, you would realize that no matter how cantankerous and how bad his approach is, which I've criticized Cornell West on how he speaks to President Obama. Me personally, I don't like the way he speaks of and to President Obama, but that doesn't cloud my judgment from being able to listen to his criticism. Because if I don't care, I don't care how he says it underneath. And I'm saying me personally, but for me, I'm able to separate his uh, his his acrimonious approach from what he actually said. And the critique leveled at President Obama on poverty, the critique leveled on President Obama from foreign affairs, uh, national security, uh, bombing, droning, um, the, his critique on President Obama on neoliberal economic um, the the entire neoliberal economic paradigm. There is some validity to it. There is great validity to it. There's a lot that Cornel West is saying that is absolutely true. And it does 100 percent get lost on most people who don't like his approach. I personally don't like his approach, but that doesn't make what he's saying untrue. And I think that's something that is very difficult for people who want to be intentionally obtuse. Right. If you want to just completely ignore what somebody is saying, then you will you will uh, dwell on how they said it instead of what they said and the substance of what they said. Now, granted, I'm going to say this again. Cornell West actually makes it very easy to ignore what he said because of how he said it. However, if you have enough thinking digits to be able to think beyond your initial visceral response and you actually analyze his critique, then what Cornel West has been saying about President Obama has been unfortunately true. Just ask the people who have been droned to death in the Middle East. But most people, never mind, I'm gonna leave that alone. So, all that to say, the appointment of Bernie, by Bernie Sanders of Cornell West to the DNC platform has made Hillary Clinton uh, supporters lose their damn minds and try to reduce and erase Cornell West brilliance and Cornell West uh, contribution on race matters, on, on poverty matters, on, on issues that are so important ostensibly to people who are on the left, to progressives and liberals and people who just in the, uh, who are not Republican because that you have people who are trying to completely erase Cornell West because he dare said something against the great and powerful Barack Obama who, who I sincerely respect and admire. Don't agree with all his politics. Don't agree with a lot of things he does. But I still respect and admire. And so I, I just, for the life of me, am absolutely tired of this overly simplistic view of if you say anything, if you level any type of critique, measured or not. If you level a critique measured like Matt Brunick did of, of Joan Walsh, or you level a critique that is not measured like Cornell West did of President Obama. Measured or not, you are instantly labeled as the enemy. And the question is, at what point do we stop vilifying people just because they disagree with us and we start analyzing and look at what they're saying? Because the bottom line is, once you do that and you oversimplify things and you make someone the enemy just because they disagree with you, the bottom line is you have no, no commitment whatsoever to truth. You only have commitment to your own personal gain and your own personal agenda. You have absolutely no concern over the substance of the conversation because you don't even want to have the damn conversation. Speaking to is this propensity in democratic circles and people who are not republicans to actually behave like ronya Kalik just said with the type of behavior that we are caricatured with caricatured with by the republican party if you cannot handle dissent if you cannot handle being criticized you have no place in power you have no place in politics and you need to take your little sensitive ass somewhere and sit down because we have serious issues to tend to and we have serious conversations that we need to have major debates, legitimate debates where we are going to get upset. We are going to say things that you don't like. We're going to disagree vehemently 
And if you want to play the victim just because I criticize and critique your policies, your positions, then you're not qualified to be in politics. Every now and then we will step on each other's toes. And if you're so busy crying victim and playing the victim, then how the hell can we address the issues? Well, that's the answer to the question right there, Ben. The reality is they don't want to address the underlying issues and they are intentionally playing this game to keep us from ever having the conversations about what President Obama has failed on, about how Democrats are using identity politics to divide us and from ever having us to have a conversation on economic populism, but we can have a conversation about identity all day long, right? Let's talk about identity till we are blue in the face. That's perfectly fine, so long as we don't talk about economic populism. And the problem is, by the time most people are hip to that game, it's already too late and the election is over. So you have master spinners. You have masterful people who do this for a living. Like Malcolm X said, they are professional liars and they specialize in the art of half truths. Some of these people who are on television to keep us divided, talking about these, these issues that are, unfortunately, they are important. We do need to talk about identity we do need to talk about race we do need to talk about lgbtq rights we do need to talk about harassment from women but uh, uh uh but the reality of it is is that we are allowing them to stop the conversation from ever going somewhere substantive to under to address the underlying issue because they benefit from the underlying issue they benefit from this neoliberal economic paradigm. That's who's writing their checks. That's who's paying the corporate. They, they benefit from this corporatocracy. Cop, corporatocracy is getting late. Whatever the hell. They benefit from it. They get they, they their checks come directly from corporations. Corporations that are buying advertisements on their networks and buying advertisements in their in their uh, um, in their blogs. And then their online websites, you know, not only corporations, but also the Democratic Party. They benefit from this plutocracy. They benefit from this this two party system that is broken. Because they get billions of dollars in election year money. So I said all that to say it is it is indicative. And you see, you, you know, it is it, you, it's a overall theme that is hitting on every single level conversation because they don't want to have the more nuanced conversation about the real substantive issues. They just want to pretend as though they're all victims. And at the end of the day, that keeps us from ever talking about the underlying economic problems that if you were really concerned about intersectionality, then your intersectionality would also include poverty.